Hey, what's up guys? I'm Hop. Thanks for tuning into TFB TV. I recently did a review of the new Taurus G3 Toro, which is the optics ready version of the Taurus G3 series. And for the duration of that review, I was using a Delta Point Pro. A lot of guys pointed out in the comments that the Delta Point Pro costs more than the gun that it was mounted to. And that is true. However, it's not uncommon for an optic to cost as much or more than the gun that it's mounted on. For example, if you take high-end red dot sights like a Aimpoint T2 or a Comp M5, you're probably going to be paying around 800 bucks, maybe a little bit more once you factor in the cost of a mount. For that much money, you can get a really good entry-level Ruger MPR. If you step it up to magnified optics, a mid-range LPVO will probably run you somewhere in the vicinity of 1500 bucks. For 1500 bucks, you can buy or build a really nice AR. And that's not even getting into the top end of high magnification scopes. You can easily spend significantly more money than your gun is worth on some glass and batteries. But you don't necessarily have to. The red dot that's currently mounted to this G3 Toro is the Bushnell RXS 100. It's a $100 pistol red dot sight that uses the Delta Point Pro mounting footprint. I used this one for a little bit on the TX22 competition. Now we're going to try it out on the G3 and see how it performs. Stick around. The RXS100 is one of a pair of new budget pistol red dots from Bushnell. The 100 is the cheaper model and retails for $100 even, which makes it probably the cheapest pistol red dot on the market. Unless you include those drop shipped Amazon specials made by companies with unpronounceable English names that probably won't exist in two weeks. The flagship of the RXS line retails for $250 and is called the RXS250 because apparently coming up with names is difficult. Both red dots use the common Delta Point Pro mounting footprint and have a 4 MOA simple red dot as the only reticle option. They also come with low profile rail mounts if you aren't directly mounting to a Delta Point Pro plate or optics cut. The 250 boasts a number of features not found on the 100. It has a much longer 50,000 hours of runtime at the medium setting versus the 5,000 hours of the cheaper model. It also has night vision compatible settings. I've shot the RXS100 under night vision, but it doesn't really work that well. The dot is so bright it covers the whole target even at only 10 yards, so you're pretty much just point shooting. Neither model has to be removed to change the battery. The RXS100 has a side loading battery tray and the 250 has a top loading battery. I initially tested the RXS100 on the Taurus TX22 competition, and it worked great on that gun, but 22 long rifle isn't a real test of an optics capability and durability, so I swapped it over to the Taurus G3 Toro for some more shooting. The RXS100 is controlled by two side buttons, one press to turn it on, then press up and down to change brightness between eight different levels. With the brightness all the way up, the RXS100 is really bright, and with the brightness all the way down, the dot is really clean. I'm impressed with how crisp and clean the dot is at lower brightness levels. I never had to run it all the way up when shooting outdoors in the daytime either. The ease of acquiring a sight picture with a pistol red dot pretty much depends on the size of the window, so the RXS100 isn't as fast to acquire as the Delta Point Pro, with its massive window the size of an original Game Boy. There is a strange noticeable reflection of the red dot on the underside of the optics hood. It's a shiny, curvy piece of aluminum, so it catches the light pretty well, I guess. A small piece of electrical tape under the hood would probably fix that no problem, but still, I don't think I've ever seen that on a pistol red dot before. I've never shot a pistol red dot that cost $100 before either, so I don't know, man. I guess that's life. Just for shits and giggles, I'm going to try using some of my old PT-24-7 magazines in the G3 Toro. I kind of think they'll work. I mean, they're the same uh, mag catch pattern, totally different floor plate, but I don't know, man. I'm curious, and I don't have a whole lot of spares for the G3 Toro, so we're just killing time out here, man. Yeah, works for me, man. The RXS100 is a pretty impressive little thing for only 100 bucks. For a 22 pistol or a dedicated plinker, it's a worthy pint-sized successor to the old Bushnell TRS-25. I wouldn't use one of these for a defensive or carry gun though. 
Not that I think it wouldn't hold up to the abuse, it's too early to say, but after about 250 rounds in 9mm through the Taurus G3 Toro, it is holding up fine so far. The reason I wouldn't use it is because of the automatic shutoff. The RXS100 has a 12 hour automatic shutoff feature and no shake awake feature. The Hollow Sun 407 currently riding on my Glock 19 has an automatic shutoff feature too, but I have no idea how long it takes because I can't even sneak up on that gun without the dot turning back on. It's very dependable, I don't ever have to press buttons or think about it at all, it's just on when I need it to be. 12 hours is a long time for an auto shutoff, so it's probably fine, but I'm just not going to carry that, sorry. The RXS 250 has the same 12 hour shutoff by default, however you can easily disable it and just leave it on all the time. With a 50,000 hour battery life, if you replace the battery on even numbered birthdays, you'll never have a problem. I'd rather think about my optic once every two years instead of twice a day. The RXS 250 has easily an extra $150 worth of features, so that's the version I would rather have for a carry gun, and it's still one of the cheapest options currently available. A Hollow Sun 507 is probably going to run about 50 bucks more than an RXS 250. Their feature sets are very similar, but between those I'd be tempted to lean towards the Hollow Sun because they have a longer track record at this point, and I've used them with good results before. The RXS100 is a pretty great value for 100 bucks, and I think both of these red dots will find their place in the market without too much trouble. Good on Bushnell for keeping current with what consumers are actually into right now. Thanks for watching guys. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Go ahead and check them out, they keep this channel possible, and so do our viewers like you who support us via Subscribestar and Patreon. Links to both of those can be found in the video description. We've also got a link to our Discord server. If I was you, I would stay far, far away, but I'm not you, I'm me, and I am in fact on Discord a lot. See you next time.